Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. We're back for part 90 today and it is a big one. We've got a chance in a doubleheader to wrap up the Europa League top spot in our group to make sure we go straight through to the last 16. A massive achievement that would be and another boost for the Welsh football coefficient. And then we've got to try and build our lead at the top of the title race. We're on 41 points with TNS breathing down our neck, just one point behind. We've dropped a few more points, we've got a bit closer to them. But we now face Carmarthen, who are in the top half and have less than half the points we do. You can see how condensed the middle of the table is. There's five sides separated by three points. And then us and TNS at the top in a world of our own. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on, another inopportune injury as you can see in the team news today, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. Some special videos and playlists in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, which the link to is in the description below. But today, the good thing is we've got two home games in a row. Now, normally, you'd say that. The problem is in the Europa League this season, we've been brilliant on the road and average at home. Now, I was trying to look for a pattern of this because you think, well, why are we struggling at home to Club Bruges and Lisey or Warsaw? And actually, the fact is that whenever Greg Pringle's not played, we've not been very good. When Ben Cottrell's been out injured, it's not mattered so much. He's been out the whole season. But Pringle's out, we don't win. And that's the case today. So I'm a little bit concerned about this one, to be honest. We'll go and have a look at the table in a minute and what all the ramifications are. But in the meantime, we've got to find a way to win without Greg Pringle. It's as simple as that. We can't find a permanent player anywhere near as good. We haven't got any more loan spots for this season. So we are left with trying to find a solution from the players already here. And until the strikers all hit top, top form, I don't know that we're able to do that. Carmarthen should be a bit easier, but we have suffered a European hangover or two this season. If we go and have a look at the schedule, see what's been happening since you were last with me. One of those came immediately after the last episode. You were with me for the Legia Warsaw draw. We followed it up. We've dropped points against Swansea Uni. Elliot Andrew got us back on terms after an early conceded goal. Ironically, Sean Hughes, one of our former youth players, was released, went to Swansea Uni and then scored the equaliser against us. Or the opening goal, I should say, that led to the draw. Harvey Lloyd was sent off on the hour mark, which sort of thwarted any attempt to try and get the winner. We had to go to a 4-4-1 with the diamond being the four, of course. But sacrificing one of those strikers takes away so much of our threat. We have bounced back with six successive wins, though. Only one goal conceded during the international break. A 2-0 win against Barrytown United started it. Worked out quite well with Harvey Lloyd. He was suspended, but he was also on international duty, so couldn't have played anyway. Max Dean got the brace in that one. An efficient performance, rather than a spectacular one. The spectacular came 4-1, away from home at Queen's Park. A Joe Duffy hat-trick, one for Greg Pringle. Unfortunately, an Archie Woods injury as well. And Afalabi got a late goal to pull one back. But by then, the game was well out of sight. We won 3-0 away at Colwyn Bay as we continued our much stronger form on the road. A late red card didn't do much to alter the game as Joe Duffy's brace and Ian Brooks had made it a comfortable 3-0 win. Lovely strike from Brooks on the diagonal from the right side of the box too. A comfortable 2-0 win away at Club Bruges, probably the best result of the season. A Tom Jones brace, the youngster really revelling on a big occasion in Europe. And you can see by his attributes... He's starting to become a superstar. He's still only 18, and not even 18 in six months, by the way. He's played 66 league games, despite injury problems in one year. He's starring in the Champions League. He's starring in the Europa League. He looks an absolute gem. He's getting better and better and better. And if we can get him anywhere near his potential, he's going to be one of the best players the Welsh League has ever seen. We followed that up with a 4-0 win away at Aberystwyth. No European hangover that time. We had largely Greg Pringle to thank, who got a hat-trick, two of them coming in the second half. And Joe Duffy put the gloss on it with a fourth goal late on as well. A 3-0 win for the backup side against Carnarvon in the Welsh Cup third round. Max Dean with a brace and Elliot Andrew with one as well. As one of those, it's going to have to come into form today. Max Dean seems to be the man... Last time he let us down against Legia Warsaw, but today we need a big performance from him because he's going to have to start up there. We would have tried Ian Brooks, which we had done once before off the bench. But unfortunately, we keep getting moaned at for not playing him as a box-to-box -box midfielder, so we can't do that anymore. The positive, though, despite being third in the group, I'd argue Sarajevo are the weakest on paper. If we go and have a look at what the group looks like, they're on six points, Legia Warsaw on five, Club Bruges on seven. So actually... We've got a better head-to-head -head than Club Bruges, so we must have won the group. It says qualifier one, 
So we have qualified at first seed. So we've already won the group. This is about gloss. And don't forget in the group stages, you build your coefficient for the wins as well. So the difference between 10 and 13 points for Welsh football, for TNS moving forward, is massive. For us though, it would be nice to finish it with 13. It would be a brilliant achievement. In the SPFL Trust Trophy, we'll face either Kilmarnock in the semi-final or Linfield, who gave us a run in the final last year, who gave us a run in Champions League qualifying at the start of this season. And then we could have English opposition in the final again. Boston United still going. We'll see if they reach the final too. The Welsh Cup's going well. The League Cup's going well. But this is the big one. Can we get top spot? Can we win it comfortably? And can we keep building the coefficient? And you've got to say, it's good to see a close title race for the third or fourth year in a row now. So into the match we go. It's a big one for us. We want to be stylish. We want to get points on the board. And we want to look as good as we possibly can. So I think... Our assistant has done quite well here. He might have picked the strongest possible 11. He's put Dean in alongside Duffy, who is starting to improve again, by the way. And then on the bench, I'm not risking Greg Pringle. With top spot wrapped up, it's not that important. It's important, but it's not life or death. So Badebo is going to be a sub. Jack Hankin will be one as well instead of holding. Then on the bench, we're going to get Cannell and Williams in. We've played a few games recently. Malone's there. And then I could get one of the youngsters on in theory. But I'm going to go for Archie Woods, who's returning from injury. Because the title race in Wales is more important. And we need to keep people fit. So that is the lineup we're going for. It's George Wickens in goal. Weaver and Riley the fullbacks with Boys and Price at centre half. Lloyd, Broom, Brooks and Jones the midfield diamond there. We're quite used to seeing them this season. But not Max Dean ahead of them. Greg Pringle's injured. Dean comes in. And Duffy already with 28 goals. Is alongside him and the talisman up front today. So into the game we go. Is Bangor City v Sarajevo. And can we win the Europa League group stage in style. This is what we're looking for. Straight into the last 16. And to get everyone on form ahead of the Welsh title race. Which looks like being very close this year. So the Bosnians only six substitutes today. Not quite sure of the reasons for that. But let's get the lads motivated. Let's go and get into it. Apparently it's not the best weather conditions. Now the race course isn't full. And I will say, as much as we've had a lucky Europa League group stage in terms of sides that we can beat, and a very winnable group, we've got to say, even for a side like us at Bangor City, it has led to a slight dip in the revenue from gate receipts. And when we've already lost that Champions League group stage money, which is about £10 million down the drain, we would have ideally liked to have got it. But I think financially we'll be alright. Again though, we're dominating this match in terms of the stats, but we've seen nothing. And the first time we're back is Sarajevo on the ball with Skegro on the right-hand side. And without Greg Pringle, we look so toothless in Europe. As Duffy gets the ball to Max Dean, he's beaten his man and he could shut me up here. Max Dean's in. <laughs> oh, wow. I just said we look toothless without Pringle. And then the man who's come in for him has just deliciously dinked it over the keeper and made it 1-0 Bangor City. I'll shut up now. Max Dean's proven a point. We're going to win this group in style. Three points, the coefficient building is exactly what we want. And at the moment, Legia Warsaw up to second. Because with Club Bruges losing, it's going to get very tight in the middle of this group. As Boys goes back to his keeper, Wickens, flying out from between the sticks. Goalkeeper in shorts, never trust them. Long ball down the right-hand side, it's well over hit. The keeper's made a howler here though. Dean's going to nick it. Duffy's in the middle if he can deliver. He does just that. But it was really poor. He dallied on it there, Max Dean. And in the end, Duffy was closed down very quickly as Keegan Riley's got it on the right for Max Dean. To Riley again. Back to Broom. Chance to cross to the back stick to Brooks. Thunders it against the crossbar. It was a great technique. Broom gets it in again though. Duffy heads in. We're looking back to our best here. Greg Pringle's not playing and we're still going to win. And that's all I'm hoping for this season. One of you mentioned it down in the comments and I'm looking at it next summer. If we can get someone of Pringle's quality alongside him and then have Dean and Duffy, the stars for so long, as our backup strikers next year. Imagine how dangerous we'll be. It's going to be absolutely crucial for us. We have got our youth intake preview as well, in other news, as we praise the lads at 2-0 at half-time. So there is a lot to look forward to in this save. As Lloyd gets the ball in, Duffy heads in again. 30 up for the season. Absolutely stunning in December. And it's Bangor City 3, Sarajevo 0. We're making it look good now. We are putting Welsh football on the map. And we were disappointed we didn't get to the Champions League group stages this year. But we're making up for it now. As Weaver's got a free kick on the right. Ten gone in the second half. Brooks picks it up to Broom. To Lloyd. To Brooks again. Lovely football. Quick tempo. Good interchange. Price gets it in. 
It's Broom to Riley. Through ball to Max Dean. Chance to shoot for four. Brilliant defending. Great tackle. Back to Riley again. Now into Tom Jones. The youngster scores. He's really delivering on the biggest stage now. And he's starting to become a superstar. I'm delighted to see one of our own do it. And we have to keep him at all costs for the duration of this save. Right, 25 minutes to go. Apparently, Harvey Lloyd is one yellow from a suspension. So I'm going to rest him and bring on Archie Woods. Continue his comeback from injury. Brooks is tired in the middle. He'll be replaced by Luca Cannell. And I'd like to get Hankin on, but Riley's having a good match. So I'll tell you what, actually. Instead of bringing Archie Woods on, who's complacent, let's bring Hankin on. We'll put Price into the holding role. Riley sent at half, Hankin out to right back. And then Broom can be the final sub. He's had a good game, but I want to look after him for the weekend. So Daniel Williams will get 25 minutes. Plenty of experience between him and Cannell in the middle. Club Bruges equalise. It is getting tasty in this group here. As Bangor City have the corner. Into the front post by Williams. Headed away easily. Williams back to Cannell. Chance to shoot there. Not much pressure. Instead threads it through to Tom Jones. To Duffy. To Cannell. Out to Weaver. Chance to cross from the left. Hankins at the back post. And he heads it just wide at a post. We probably didn't create the best chance possible there. But at 4-0, I think we can let the lads off. As it stands, Sarajevo stay third. Club Bruges back into second. And Legia Warsaw out of Europe altogether. Really interesting finish to this one. It's a throw on the left for the away side. Cannell intercepts it though to Max Dean. Duffy's got Tom Jones with him. Already scored one today. He can look up for Duffy in the middle if he wants to find the hat trick. Does just that. The shot's blocked though. It's away for a throw in. Five minutes remaining. It's a Sarajevo corner. Into the back post. Off the line. And it's Tom Jones there again. Legia Warsaw have scored now. It's completely turned around. Legia Warsaw second. Club Bruges third. Into the Europa Conference for them. And Sarajevo now out of Europe as well. Compounds the misery on a poor night for them in Wales. It's Bangor City 4, Sarajevo 0. And in the end, that was a routine victory. Even without Greg Pringle, we made it look comfortable. Now let's go and get in charge of this title race. Carmarthen to come in three days' time. We'll be back in a minute for that one. And maybe we'll get the Europa League draw as well. We're back to face Carmarthen on Sunday as TNS travel to Newtown as well. It is a big weekend of Welsh Premier League action. If we don't win this and TNS win theirs, they'll be top of the league. And that, going into Christmas, could be a big thing for them. Of course, I did mention we might have the Europa League draw. We won't because it's only the first knockout round and we're straight through to the 16s. However, I promised you a youth intake preview and we've got it. It's our first one since Kenny Jacket joined the club. And I'm afraid to say it's our most disappointing in years. Now, I don't know if it's because it's actually disappointing or if it's just because Kenny Jacket is more realistic. Whereas Amari Morgan Smith told us every year that we were going to get the best youth intake we ever saw. And then we didn't. So maybe he's just giving us the honest truth. So we won't be short of potential centre-halves. That just means there's lots of them about. There's lots of wingers. One of the wide midfielders looks a good prospect though. Two forwards a fine prospect and a good young Welsh striker. So as long as two players are good, we can cope with the rest being average. We don't need it to be a team of superstars. We need to improve the Welsh Premier League a bit and produce our own stars. So one Tom Jones and an awful intake apart from it will certainly take that. No defensive midfielders, attacking midfielders. We've got two good ones. We don't need another. The fullbacks are not the best, so that's something to worry about. The centre-halves, there's lots of them, but they're not very good. Same for the wingers. And overall, it is a mediocre group of players. So that we've got to be a little bit alarmed by. Because we've got great facilities. We've got great recruitment. We've got good coaching. But it's not planning into our intakes at the moment. Although, in Wales, are you going to get them every single year? We've probably got to be a bit more realistic. In terms of our squad, though, everyone who started in midweek is fit for the weekend. Greg Pringle is back, though. So what does the physio say? No complications whatsoever. So Max Dean, despite that goal, will come straight back out the side. Greg Pringle in up front. Max Dean on the bench, probably in place of Andrew in truth. And then in terms of the bench, cannell has got a heavy match load now. So we'll replace him with Holding just so we meet the under-19 quota. And aside from that, no changes. Only the superstar coming back in. So we'll hope it's another very good display. Into the match we go. Can we stay top of the Welsh Premier League? TNS pushing us all the way. And we've got to stop them. So yes, only the one change made. But we have got 10 days off after this. So I'm not quite as concerned as before. Now Peter Wakeham is the man we looked at in the last episode. A good young player who came in on loan. I can't see Jack Owen there actually. 
He's been there for years, so unless he's got an injury, I don't know why he's missing out. We're going to go and have to have a look in a minute. I've just highlighted the referee by mistake. We came back for a highlight so quickly as Riley nicks it at right back, gets the ball clear to Joe Duffy, holds it up for Riley, who goes long towards Greg Pringle. He's in over the top. He beats the offside trap. Or does he? It's disallowed for offside. We're suddenly slowed in our tracks as Greg Pringle does not beat the offside trap. And it remains nil-nil here as the ball's out to the left to Griffith. He can cut it inside. Duffy nicks it off the centre half. It's just too easy. Joe Duffy's in. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it's deflected off the defender. Hits the post. Hits the line. And then the defender clears it away. Good work from the centre half to recover. And Newtown have the lead against TNS. Harvey Lloyd has a free kick. Edge of the box. It is stunning. Into the bottom corner. Round the wall. Keeper had no chance. Bangor City lead after three and a half. TNS are behind. And is this the day we take charge of the title race again? That's what we're going to wait and find out. Let's have a quick look what's happened to Jack Owen. He is still their key player. And it looks like he's unavailable. Why is he not playing? He's tired. It's a shame because the fact they haven't got their best player is surely going to harm them. And without their best player, can they compete against us? At the back, you could certainly argue they can't. 1-0 to Bangor City, 1-0 to Newtown. And four points clear at the top of the title race. And we're back again as we've got a free kick in an almost identical position. Harvey Lloyd steps up again. Oh, he's at the outside of the post. Nearly gets his second. Absolutely brilliant work. Just every time it's pinpoint, he's turning into our James Ward-Prowse. And for all he does as a holding midfielder, it's possibly one of his best attributes. As Newtown have got a second, TNS are throwing it all away tonight as Weaver gets it to Jones. This is the difference as Jones is brought down again. How many fouls are Carmarthen going to concede? We can rotate the squad. We can still win games. That's what TNS haven't got. But let's see if Harvey Lloyd can add another free kick. Opposite side this time. Oh, great save by Evans. One goes in. One hits the post. One acrobatically saved. Lloyd takes the corner. In swinging delivery. Plenty of men in the box. Masters heads away. Tom Jones will chase it. Smith gets there first. And I'd imagine this will probably peter out. Or will it become a good counter-attack? It doesn't. Tom Jones with a challenge. It remains 1-0 to Bangor City. But then the bad news comes. Keegan Riley has picked up an injury. He's one of our best players. I hope it's not a bad one. We now choose between Jack Hankin and Peter Holden. Holden's arguably the better player. But Hankin played hundreds of games for us as a young superstar. One of those originals. The first year youth intake. And he's still doing well for us at right back. So on he comes with a game not yet secured. And at half-time, it's going to be 1-0 to Bangor City. And free kicks galore is all we've seen in this game. So let's tell the lads to prove a point. Get up into the second half and see if we can make it two or three. That's what we did against Sarajevo. Just over 25 minutes to go. TNS have got one back just before half-time. As Weaver delivers from the left, Duffy loses out. And Greg Pringle actually had a poor game on his return from injury. I guess you can't expect him to be up to scratch that quick. We will take him off in a minute just to prevent the injury risk. Then he's got 10 days of training to get up to full speed. As Hankin finds Price, the centre-half, into Broom. I just want that second to relax things. As Broom goes wide to Weaver. Chance to cross. Will he get to the byline? Oh, he's brought down. Way comes the man we talked about being a great loan addition. But the youth, the exuberance, a lack of discipline. TNS have turned it around. Noah Daly's at it again. But we lead 1-0 and now we lead by a man as well. So on up front is going to be Max Dean. He will replace Greg Pringle. Good to get 60 minutes under his belt. Tom Jones in the number 10 hasn't been great, but I don't know if he's the man we want to bring off at this point. We don't really have a natural number 10 replacement. So what I'm going to do is bring on young Patrick Malone. He'll replace Jones with Broom going into the number 10. And with 25 minutes to go, we try and cling on and we try and make it more comfortable too. TNS get a fourth with 10 minutes to go. I keep calling Jack Hankin young when he comes on. He's now 25 years of age. He was in that youth intake nearly nine years ago. TNS running riot from 2-0 down to 5-2 up into stoppage time. It's actually pretty poor for us to only win 1-0, particularly given we played 10 men for the last 25. But it's a win nonetheless, and we stay in charge of the title race. But TNS starting to close the goal difference gap. Maybe that'll be a factor later in the season. We'll get through the press interview. Let's get to the main screen. And let's have a look at the schedule for when we'll be back, because it looks like, for the third year in a row, we've got a title race on our hands here. Oh dear. Keegan Riley out for a month. The good news is we haven't got a game for 10 days. Then the ones we have got back-to-back -back are league games we should win without him. 
But once we get to Barry in the League Cup semi, to TNS in the away fixture in the Welsh Premier League, we could really do with having him back. And for the first of those two, we definitely won't. The second he might just make. So I'm not quite sure when we're going to be back yet. It will depend on how the January transfer window's going, who we draw in the Welsh Cup. But at the moment, I think it might be the League Cup final, which is due for the 19th of January. If that's the case, we'll probably show TNS as well in the league just before it, unless we get them in the Cup as well. But it's certainly a good position to be in. A thrilling title race in Wales is what we want to see. Straight to the last 16 of the Europa League is brilliant. And this season, we're trying to chase all the domestic trophies rather than throwing one or two away. So if you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy those two victories today, please do put a thumbs up on the video. What do you think down in the comments below? Is it good to see TNS competing? Can they have a big January window and can they really push us all the way? They're getting closer and closer each season. But what would happen if they actually won it one year? If they got into the Champions League qualifying, I'd bank on them to make the Europa Conference group stages. And even if we went through the qualifying there, I reckon we could probably do the same. And if both sides ended up there, could be massive for Welsh football. So we'll wait and see if that can happen later on in the year. We won't be giving them any free passes though. We want to win it. We want to keep the trophies rolling. If you want to find out if we can do it, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily videos released from two long-term stories, including special bits on top as well, the likes of the Welsh experiment we did recently, and the Panini sticker video, which is up in the eye above. And you can find a link to the Twitch channel in the description below. But a massive thank you for the support. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time for what I hope will be a cup final, a big game in a title race and plenty more transfer action as well. I'll see you there.